on anything. So this, so this is the equation. Uh, we have to find the function by solving. Solving this equation is the same with solving this equation. So we need a function. We have to have zero on one side. Okay, so now I'm going to share, but I can find you. Where are you? Okay, now I can find you. Okay, so in y equals, we plug in cosine. So make sure that the, you have um, a mode in radian mode because you're going to plug in something outside of a trig function. Okay, otherwise the degrees will be okay if we only have the trig, fu trig function and no x by itself outside of the trig function. But if we do have x outside of a trig function, we have to use radians. Um, okay, so in y equals, I have cosine and I have x squared and then minus x and minus x to the fourth. Okay, so then I will uh, look at one Yes, that's fine, and two, and then three, and then uh, negative one, and then zero. That's what I need. So I found an interval. So f of negative one is negative, f of zero is positive, and then I would say, uh, since f of x is continuous, everywhere, specifically on 0, I'm sorry, I went to write negative 1, 0, and f of negative 1 is less than 0, and, I will, and f of 0 is positive, and it changes sign. as here, by the intermediate value theorem for continuous functions. There exists a C in the interval open, negative 1, 0, such that f of C is 0. Okay, so in number 3, I create Newton's function, which is x minus the function cosine x squared minus x minus x to the fourth over this derivative. I have a question. Yes. So the entire point of us doing this is to try and find a zero, right? To try to uh, illustrate um, Newton's method with uh, an equation that we were given. Okay, so, but, um... We're trying to find where there's x and y is 0, right? Right. Then would, OK, so in this specific function, when x is 1, y is 0. Right. So, so let's say you did 0.5 to 1.5. Would that also be counted as correct? So if you would use uh, 0 0.5 to 1.5? Yes. Um, you would come upon one Right. And, but yes. but uh, the method will converge in one step. Most, prob it? most probably. I don't know. Steps. I don't know. I have to check. So I have to check that. Yeah, I did one, I did zero point five and one point five, and the first time I put it in, it gave me um, one. Right. Like right away. Right. So I you did can. It, it went at one point five and one point two. I went through like six iterations before it got to one point, and then eight zeros. Really. At least for me, that's what it did. Well, I'll make sure that you cannot plug in any of. Anything in uh, in the function and get zero as an integer, but we can also look at that that situation. But I'll make sure that um, the equation does not have any integer solution. Okay, so now let's differentiate. So this is negative sine 
x squared minus x. Everything here multiplied by 2x minus 1, and then minus x, I'm sorry, minus 4 x to the third. And you cannot start at 0. Be very careful here, because this is all 0. 0, this is 0. The whole denominator is 0. You cannot start at 0. So I'm going to start um, with my initial value as negative 1. Now I have to be very careful how I enter all this in the graphing calculator, because it's not easy. If I mess up or forget a parenthesis, so of course I need parentheses around the entire denominator. And I need parentheses around the entire numerator. If I omit those, the calculator will do something else. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So y equals... Ah! And I always say don't. Never mind. Cosine x squared Always insert because you already have this, right? Minus x to the fourth. And it's not a big deal, but... Okay, so I have x minus, cosine minus x to the fourth, and of course I put the parenthesis where it shouldn't be. Okay, good. And now divided by, careful, negative. I'm going to put um, just, yeah, negative, and then 2x minus 1 first. And then sine, and it would be x squared minus x. Close the parenthesis, and then minus 4x cubed, and close again. Now, of course, not there, but here. Okay. Good. So we go to um, variables, go to y variables. We use function. We use function y1 because that's where I have Newton's function. And if I plug in 0, I will be in terrible problem. Of course, I know that. Thank you very much. You don't have to tell me. OK. So go to variables. Oh, I already have it. OK. But of course, I have to start at negative 1. And now second and um, entry, and this time I want to override with the previous answer. It didn't do it. I'll do it again. OK, and clear everything else. And parentheses. So my first iteration, which is x sub 1, will be negative 0.789511716. And from this point on, I only repeat. So I don't know how many dig decimal digits we want, Dylan? I think it said six. OK. 73830066838. And now I just repeat. OK, so x sub 3. Negative point seven three four eight seven four two four seven two x sub four two okay still not seven three four eight five nine one zero four one possibly the next one will do it okay yes more than I need two four six eight that's it. So I don't need the last one. So the method, if you want, converges in four steps. If you want to consider this one the first step, then it converges in five steps. So this, two, four, six, eight. Is this OK? Any questions on Newton's method? Yeah, I get it. I'm still a little confused as how like 0 0.5 and 1.5 that interval like is it it's technically like you're doing it, but it just isn't making it 
So it's not demonstrating the method. Right. So let me let me let me do that. It's a good good point. So f of x equals cosine x squared minus x minus x to the fourth. So, so you're using the interval you said 0. 0.5 comma 1.5? Yeah. Okay, so now let me just go back for a second. Good point. So I want cosine x squared minus x. That's why they ask for all solutions. In case one of them is like that, then you don't have to do anything and move on to the next one. So I just want to see uh, the 0.5 and 1.5. It's not um, so in y2, so it's positive and negative. OK, I see it. OK. So then you picked, so in Newton's formula, you picked uh, x sub 0 was what? Um, hold on, let me... I did 1.5. OK, so we can start with 1.5. Okay, so no, I don't want that. I want this. And I want to start with 1.5. Okay. And then I want to put in the previous answer. Okay, so I guess you can you can illustrate with the same. So it's possible. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, that's fine. Now, um, if I want to start with 0.5, it's always possible that from one end we'll have take more iterations than from the other. See, for example, it jumps to 2.3. You know, it will settle back to to one, but it's possible for the first, maybe maybe even the second one, to jump outside of the interval. This is outside of the interval. It's not between 0.5 and 1.5, right? But it's possible that the first iteration will jump out, which is okay. Maybe even the second one, it's possible too. And now you'll see, we'll settle. It, it's coming from the other side, but eventually we'll still get back to 1 in more steps, however, than starting at 1.5. So you can still illustrate it, I guess. Good, very good question. So I crossed out a Newton's method from the list. Good, next question. Anything else? What would you like to continue with? Uh, could we do a question on slant asymptotes? Yes. So let's take a look on slant asymptotes. And they are on page, they are after. Um, they are after slant, uh, after L'Hopital's rule. Where is L'Hopital's rule? I got it. Okay. We can make one up if you'd like. Why don't we make one up? Can anyone give us a function? that is guaranteed to have a slant asymptote. Uh, 7x cubed uh, minus 2x squared plus 3 
over uh, x squared minus or plus 4. OK, perfect. So perfect example. OK, sorry, sorry. <coughs> Good. So please remember uh, the polynomials have to be in descending order. And I see that numerator has degree 3. It has the term with degree 3. It has the term with degree 2. But the degree 1 is missing. So to, make a, to illustrate a point, I'm just going to change this okay, into 4x minus 1. So I'm going to change the whole thing. Just to illustrate why we need to be careful about that. So I have 7x cubed. I let it dry and I'll put the minus 1. Um, minus 2x squared space plus 3. Even if we're not going to use it, the term is missing. Degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. OK, so this is minus 1. x squared times what is this? Well, obviously, 7x. I have to go back to all three distribute, change the sign, and write below like terms. 7x times x squared is 7x cubed. I have to change. 7x times negative 4x is negative 28x squared. Change. 7x times negative 1 is negative 7x. Change. This is the only spot I can put 7x. These two are gone. This is 26x squared, and this is plus 7x, and I bring down the next in line. x squared times what is this? Of course, plus 26, and that would be it. 26 times this, negative 26x squared. 26 times this, what is it? 104, OK. So it's minus plus 104x, and this is minus 26 plus 26. So the remainder that has to be boxed in, if you want, is 111x plus 29. So here I can write equals the quotient, I'm sorry, the quotient plus the remainder of the remainder over the divisor plus 111x plus 29 over the divisor x squared minus 4x minus 1. So every time Yes, in some books it's 0x. I don't care for 0x, but it's if it helps you put 0x in there, that's fine too. I think it's confusing, but if you're used to it, I'm happy with it. So the slant asymptote is only the quotient. It's a line. It has to be a line. We divide degree 3 by degree 2. We always get a line. And this is y equals 7x plus 26 is the slant asymptote. Why do you get rid of the remainder for the slant I don't. Asymptote? I don't. So the, the slant asymptote really shows that the function approaches the, uh, the asymptote. So this is the slant asymptote as x approaches infinity. And it approaches the asymptote as x approaches negative infinity. So this is for infinities. So the limit of the function as x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity, this will be 0. It will be, it will be given by this. Because when x approaches infinity, higher degree in the denominator, smaller degree in the numerator, this will approach 0. So I'm not get getting rid of anything. I'm just saying the function will approach this line because this approach okay. is 0. So on the test, if we have a slant asymptote question, is it just going to be like to find the slant asymptote? Uh, yes, we, we had an example in class with how to graph this. So this is exactly the same with any rational function, except it has a slant asymptote, meaning the function approaches the slant asymptote. And if there is a slant asymptote, the function cannot have a horizontal. It can have vertical, but it cannot have a horizontal. If I, it either has slant or horizontal, not both. OK. Better? Yeah, thank you.
Thank you.